Okay, good evening everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, first regular scheduled council meeting for October 3rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. here at the Smith <coughs> Shelter House. Good evening council, administrators, and our wonderful audience. Ms. Lowry, if you can call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. All right, and thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Preston. Yeah. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors, and we thank you for the wonderful fall weather. Please, Lord, be in this meeting. Let thy perfect will be done. Please keep thy mighty hand upon our city, our first responders, and our troops and families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My pleasure is to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are you join now? <laughs> all right, moving on, uh, we need action on the minutes for the uh, regular schedule. So moved. For 9-19-22. Council, any discussion on those minutes? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Barner. All right. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? You abstain. I was not here, right? Abstain. Correct. Abstain. Yep. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman? Yes. Lindsay? Councilman Roadwell? Yes. <coughs> and it's accepted 601. Yeah, thank you very much. And then moving on to communications for the planning board hearing that was held on September 20, 2022. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lowry, members of council. Um, I will read the recommendation that is attached to this packet. And this is from Steve Fields. He is the president of the planning board. It says, Mr. Bridge, members of city council. On the above date at 6 p.m., we had a planning board meeting at Smith Park Shelter. Item one, site plan review for Safe and Sound Outfitters. This review was passed by the planning board with the following modifications. The south lot line uh, setback will be seven and a half feet. The north lot line setback shall be 10 feet. The east-west lot lines meet the current, current zoning requirements. Planning board recommends council approve this site plan. Uh, with any other modifications council chooses to make. Um, also, they have made the recommendation uh, Community gardens as a conditional use. This is also located on the agenda. After reviewing the board rec recommends amending the current ordinance uh, that gardens are not permitted in industrial zones in the city. Anyone wishing to start a community garden must submit the proper paperwork and follow the process to obtain a permit uh, for said garden. Council as always may change and modify at their discretion. Item three, shooting ranges as conditional use. After reviewing the planning board would like to include archery ranges with, within this ordinance. Ranges shall only be permitted in zoning areas A, agricultural, GB, general business, CB, central business, I1, light industrial. Shall not be permitted in any residential zones within the city limits. Anyone wishing to operate a range in the city would need to file the uh, proper paperwork and follow the process to obtain a permit to operate. Item four, RPED setback requirements. The planning board after reviewing this ordinance would like to modify this, this to include the following minimum. Uh, side yard setbacks will be no less than seven and a half feet. The front and rear setbacks, um, it just, that's where it stops. We believe to be sufficiently, oh, to be sufficient currently. The board requests council to modify this ordinance as presented by the board. It is my understanding that Mr. Bridge will be drafting the paperwork required to present to council within the appropriate time frame as required. So in the end of that little section too, I had put a, a outline in that we had done and that is the uh, amendments to the change of the zoning code. So once you guys get the receipt of that, you're, I have highlighted the stage where we're at on that for council's easy finding in that uh, sequence. So um, with following that, we will do a uh, introduction and public hearing on November 7th for those three ordinances, community gardens, shooting ranges, and RPED setbacks. Action will be at the uh, November 21st meeting and they will be effective on 1223 and I will send out legal advertising at least 20 days before the public hearing on the 7th. So what we have today is Mr. Mark Hensley. The final step of his process is he, he's here to present his uh, site plan uh, that was approved with modifications to council for your guys' approval. So Mr. Hensley. Hello. Sir. 
Any questions the city council would have for Mr. Hensley or Mr. Hensley, would you like to say anything on your behalf? You got anything, anything you would like to say first, Mr. Hensley? I don't have anything, I'm good. That is a first. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Council, any questions, comments, feedback from Mr. Hensley? Didn't we tell them they had to hook up to the sewer system? Yes. This, yeah, this is different, but they have already done so. Okay. Yes, sir. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lindsay? I move to accept the recommendations of the planning board. If that's in line, if that's what you want. I have no questions. Okay, no, we don't have to accept them. No, we don't have to accept them. Because we're, we're, they're being brought at the next meeting, correct? Oh, you don't no, no, his we have to do tonight. His, you're approving his site plan tonight. Oh, the, site the remaining plan. three will be legislative measures. Yeah. Okay, yes. okay, I misunderstood yeah. you. I'm sorry. No, yeah. no, no, that's no. the motion I made to approve his site plan, which, okay. which okay. we have. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Maybe it'll can, pass. Can I ask one question? I sure can. What's your plan for your old building? We don't know yet. I'll probably stay there till February or March once we slow down. Potentially renting it back out, maybe to another church or something. You interested in it? <laughs> <laughs> not, not at your guys' price. Good no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, Mark. I'll just say that uh, I'm happy to see you guys in your current location. I'm also thrilled that you guys are what looks like growing and expanding because mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, New Carlisle has been in this, this, I don't know if you want to say a freeze, but this little bubble where they've kind of been stale though. for a while. And I think well, this I is just one of those businesses that, that New Carlisle needs. And I mean, New Carlisle's got its fair share of gun fans, that's for sure. So mm -hmm. I think it's a perfect fit for New Carlisle. So thank you for that. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I do have a question. Yes, sir. Are you going to put a uh, archery range in this also that's when correct. this is built yeah there'll be an I, indoor i thought you was but <coughs> i wanted to verify indoor and outdoor mm -hmm. okay thank you you have an outdoor range correct awesome up to what caliber uh archery archery only no oh, just archery yeah just archery oh uh, okay it wasn't the range i was talking about no. but <laughs> <laughs> you figured that out when i said caliber huh <laughs> all right any other questions are you ready miss Barner? Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Pass the 7 0. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Hensley. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. In a generous mood tonight. What's that? We're in a generous mood tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving forward to city, yes, city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, <clears throat> council, members of public. Under discussion topics, we have a joint meeting uh, set for 1024 with Bessel Township, Clark County. Uh, I've been in contact with Nancy, um, one of their uh, township trustees down there, Nancy Brown. I uh, spoke with her a little bit before the meeting today. What we're trying to avoid is a meeting on the 24th where it's very unproductive. Um, so we had discussed, she had went to her commissioners and they are, oh, they have no qualms with this annexation. As long as it's a type two, it stays in the township, the property tax is basically set up how we have it now where our people can vote in some of their uh, certain elections they have. They have no interest in doing it any other way. I don't think our council has any interest in doing it any other way too. So I'm going to get a hold of the developer who's also the petitioner tomorrow um, and let her know this is with council's blessing tonight that we are okay with a type two expedited. And what that does is keeps everything in the township. We will provide the services. Um, they'll get their split of the county property taxes. Again, it's basically how it's set up, how we have it now. Um, if council would like to uh, entertain that, that would be great. If not, we can go ahead and stick with the meeting on the 24th. And that's not saying we can't have another informational meeting at a later date, but I just don't think we need a full fledged meeting to determine what type of annexation they're gonna go for. So you're asking for a date sooner? I'm asking uh, for a motion to approve me to go and tell the developer tomorrow that we can do an expedited type two. Okay. Question. Mr. Lindsay. So we're not annexing the land? No, we are. But it's, I, I guess I, you lost me and you said it, staying in the township? 
So there, yeah, there's different. I mean, types it'd be of, part of the city, correct? Which and we're in the township, so it'd be set up how it is now. So basically, when New Carlisle, parts of New Carlisle are still in the township. So when they have elected township trustees, we vote in it. Their fiscal officer, right. we vote in it. Right. We don't vote in there any kind of levy-driven stuff like right. that. They also retain a certain percentage of that property tax. Okay. So if we were to take it out of that, we would have to give them a check for what they would have to lose. So we kind of covered that with the Miami County annexation if we were gonna do a type one, but we decided on a type two over in Miami County, which is not going forward, of course. And, and they would still be paying all of our city taxes and levies and stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I just want, it sounded weird when you said it for some reason. Sure. I know, it's my brain. Mm -hmm. Council, any thoughts on that? Are you okay with that? I move to accept. Second. Councilman Lindsay? Yes, ma'am. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Motion passes six to one. Right, thank you. <clears throat> and moving on, um, um, I know there's some discussion at one of the last special meetings about putting the council meetings on YouTube. And I said it would be up for discussion tonight. So that's something that's on the agenda. You guys can entertain that now or can wait to the next meeting. Council. Aren't they all ready? Yeah, it's, there was some questions of whether we should continue or not, I believe. I believe that costs like 3000 3500 a month to do that. Is that correct or not? What, what is it? Well, no, that's just it's, I thought it's free. It's not free. It, we, got, free? No, it, we have to pay them to do it. So. Yeah. Mileage rate and some uh, extra rates, but it's nowhere near three thousand dollars. Okay, I, I mm -hmm. must have been something else we was talking about. I don't remember. So, I would be good with it not being on YouTube. Maybe it would force the citizens to come to us and actually see us face to face, have a conversation. Maybe. Uh, so that's my two cents on it. I don't think we need to put it on on YouTube anymore. Set whatever council. Mr. Mayor, sir, just out of curiosity. What would be a reason for not putting them up? That's for you and your council to decide. It, it came up by lack of participation here. So that's how the conversation started. If you don't put it on YouTube, would more people show up? But I stress this is not an administration thing. This is council had brought it up to discuss. So I said I just put it on the agenda. Yeah, yeah we're well, brought it up on our side of the table. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Okay. Mr. Bond? I'm always a fan of more personal interaction so that's my two cents worth i just like more face-to-face -face, more personal interaction my only concern by taking off youtube is uh, without having actual a record video record uh, at times you might take you know i'm not saying this happens but you know, a person in the audience opinion now it spreads fat and you have no real video proof of well that's not really how it actually happened or that's not really what was said um to where you know and now it's his word versus yours mm -hmm. um, you know most people won't take time to read the notes and actually see what the conversation was or how the person was reacting or so i i'm i'm in favor of of keeping on youtube as long as it's not live streamed um, you know, if it's posted a day or so after the means are over, I'm fine. But I think for us, it, it's it's a uh, I want this probably an insurance policy, so to speak, of to actually what when when someone in the community says, "Well, you know, you were doing this." Well, no, no, not so. I'm listening. I'm just That's looking at the actually. Can I and in, get entertained? We would still provide audio, so it would still be set up how it is now. We would just cover that video and then you would still have an audio file that we would have oh. record of that we would send off to emily to do minutes and stuff like that so we would do it like we, we did the plan the audio on youtube just no video no it wouldn't be posted on youtube mm -mm. so just out of, just out of, i'm sitting here looking just so just a little bit of information i mean not solid solid numbers but okay so prior to covid before we was only video because of covid reasons our videos were hitting anywhere from 30 to, you know, depending on the topic, you know, 150. And then, you know, during COVID times, they were higher because that was the only way. 
Um, but then, uh, you know, they were still around the 30 to 60 to, you know, 100. And then, of course, we jumped into the, 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 you know, the expansion, you know, all that stuff. It jumped in the two, threes, but so just. So we're still not done with the expansion? No, no, so uh, they'll be popular, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And it's not a monetary budget thing. The city can more than we can afford to put them up. It was yep. just a, a participation side of things. What do we got to get to in order to be making money off of these? Subscription <laughs> 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 based. You better get a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make these a lot more entertaining, man. <laughs> oh <boy>. Mr. Mayor, <laughs> I'm sure there are quite a few people who would like to attend our meetings, but mm -hmm. through their schedule, can't. Like work I would, mainly. I would agree. I think we should keep them up. All right. Well, if there's any motion either way, now would be the time to do so. And if I'm, not, and if not, we'll leave it. We'll leave it I move we keep Rick Martin on YouTube. I don't think we'll need. Well, before we, I don't think we need a motion to keep it where it's at. If we're just going to leave it where it's at, I think you can just yeah. You don't need to away. change anything. So, so do you want to put all that in the motion to it if you want? I would withdraw, withdraw the motion. Any other discussion on that? All right, moving on. Back to you, Mr. Kirch. All right, now moving on with the city manager report. Um, I was approached by the realtor. The house next to the city building is up for sale. So I told her I was not able to make that um, decision on my own. Um, it, it would be a council driven dis decision. Uh, administration opinion. Yeah, we could do stuff with it. Um, I don't think we need to own another building without having a solid game plan of what we're going to do with it. Um, I just don't think it's time for us to buy another building. That's just my, my, it's my opinion as administrator to council. Council could direct us in either way. Uh, we could tear it down for additional parking, do some sort of addition onto that city building. But the catch with that is if we <coughs> renovate our current city building, we'd have to do voter approval. So we'd have to buy the house, then put it on the ballot to do the renovations and hoping that passes. If not, then we have to sell the house again. So I just don't think it's the timing for the city, but that is also the council's decision. Yeah, she uh, actually was at the bank of uh, the gentleman yeah. who passed away, her granddaughter or something mm -hmm. was at the bank. And she'd asked me if we were interested in it. I said, you know, I know it's been chatted about casually, but mm -hmm. I said, I don't think anybody's interested in it. Sure. Any feedback on it? I agree with Mr. Bridge. I agree. Okay, we'll move on. Um, beggars night. I know the sheriffs had set theirs, I think, for October 29th, if my memory serves me right. Is that something council wants to stick with? Yes. Yes. Well, you want to set your own date? Yes. Do we need to make a motion for that? Mm -mm. I mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, if you guys are setting, yeah, if you're setting a date for something, I probably would just be safe. Yeah. We've always done it this Saturday before. Yeah, before Halloween. Halloween. So. Someone said that was done last we'd, year. We'd like to make that permanent. I, I thought think. for sure we made that permanent. I, I don't recall that, up. but I'm not saying it oh, didn't well, happen. Like lots of happen. happened this past year. Um, uh -huh. I thought we had made a, a promotion to always have mm -hmm. yeah. major night the last Saturday, Saturday of October. So maybe the motion tonight could re reaffirm that, and then we can I can put it on my reoccurring events. Uh, I'll make the motion to make it on the last Saturday of October prior to the actual Halloween date. Uh, regardless of what anybody else does in the county. Second one, second one. All right. You're saying this is perfect. Unless yes. we change it down the road. Yeah, let's just change. I mean, it just makes sense to have it on a Saturday. No reason to try to even get home. No reason to have it during the week like it was here a few years ago. Agreed. Ready? Yep. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadhold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Passes 7 0. Okay, and moving on to team manager report. Um, the last council meeting I was absent at, town hall date was up for discussion. I don't know if that's something council wants to discuss tonight or move on to the next one. Historically, we have always done it when we vote on the budget. I think last year, the year before, we kind of got off that cycle. But it kind of worked out because it had the budget presentation and a lot of information. yeah, a lot of information. So with that being said, if you go down one more thing, the uh, budget, it will be introduced to council on 1121 with action on December 5th. Do we want to go ahead and just set the town hall meeting for the 5th of December when we vote on the budget? That's fine with me. 
I just when I brought when I mentioned it at the last meeting that you weren't, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't rush it, that it was the mm -hmm. time that, that it was being advertised, and so mm -hmm. it wasn't rushed or anything. I know yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't rushed like there was something to hide to us, and I just I know that it was like, oh, we got to make sure we it get did. this in, and, mm -hmm. and if we can maybe polish it a little, if we're going to do it here, if we're going to do it at the school or where we may have done it, maybe just have some coffee there as well, maybe. You know, just to make it a little bit more personal, in my opinion, is just what I would like to see. I don't know what council thinks. So, are we going to do the prior to the regular meeting, or is that just going to take place at the regular? I think in years past, like town hall started at six, and then regular meeting started at six thirty. Mm -hmm. Or you just knock it in the one meeting because really, it's it's. It should be focused on council and what they see their visions and goals are. Each department head will give a small report. Mm -hmm. um, introduce yourself. Yeah, introduce yourself. So um, it could be intertwined. It could be separate. Do you guys want to separate from the meeting? Yeah. Maybe with whatever, whatever you decide or whatever, the, whatever how, however it plays out. Mm -hmm. If it runs over, it runs over. If it don't, it don't. You know. Is, I mean, is that sufficient for? We can do the. Uh, I said we do the. We do the. Do the. Um, I can't even think. Do the uh, town hall meeting portion first. Mm -hmm. Because if that, you know, we can we can cut that short, and then if go we, into regular session. Carry it over. And just, yeah. If there's still questions. There's, obviously, it's it's in the mm -hmm. the agenda for questions, and we can get carried over there. Mm, I think that's why we've done it before in the past like that. Yeah, maybe there's some buffer. Sure. That's at 6 p.m. that night? Yes. It'll be December 5th at 6 p.m. I mean, because historically, or, you know, in the past, we don't get a huge turnout for town hall, but I would love to see it, you know, have better attendance. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that something you would need, I mean, that you could set up that when we do that, that there would be some coffee and maybe some juice and water here and stuff? Yeah, what do you guys want? Just let me know if I have it ready. Basic, nothing, okay. nothing crazy. A you guys want food nice. or just drinks, like uh -huh. chips or anything? Huh? A little vodka would be nice. Not, not on, not on city property. We ain't. <laughs> well, let's do it out in the street somewhere. Okay. Oh, awesome. just invite. So coffee, me. water. We're in the street. <laughs> just invite. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not coming. There's not donuts. Christmas cookies. <laughs> oh, I know you want donuts. <laughs> so snacks and drinks. Yeah, yeah. Light Maybe snacks and drinks. Yeah. Powder donuts. <laughs> Back to you whenever you're ready, sir. Are we having it here? I would say so. Yeah, okay. Um, Sunshine Law Training, Friday, October 7th. That is this Friday. Um, for those of you, I think I registered everyone just to catch us off. If you can't go, great, I'm going. So that's another thing. If you cannot go Friday, it is okay because I'm going on behalf of all council. But I highly recommend each council member go to kind of get that one on one with it because it is very valuable information. You should have already had your parking passes emailed to you. It is very important if you go that you register that. Um, you do not have to print anything out. It goes into their database. So when they scan, go into the parking lot, scan it, and you come back and you don't get towed. So if you need any assistance with that, just let me know. We'll definitely help you out. But again, that is this Friday. Uh, Miami University, Oxford, and in that email, it's at the Farmer School of Business. So follow that address to the Farmer School of Business building, not the main address of the university. Um, looking forward to that. There's actually probably, um, and I like them, they're a good time. That address is 83 North Patterson Avenue in Oxford. Thank you. Just in case council didn't have it or needs it or whatever. Yep. And the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, budget work session um, So we need dates scheduled for the week of 24th and a week of 1031. 1024, we have a special meeting set, I mean, scheduled already. 1024? And this is to go over the operating budget. So you need to set a date for once of each week. We'll do one in 1024. If we need to do the overflow of the next, overflow of the next week, we'll use it as overflow. But at least have the two dates set. Any feedback, council, on dates or not available or available? Mr. Britt? Mm -hmm. I'll get back. The uh, you said we had what scheduled on the twenty fourth? Is this? It's a special meeting with Bethel. If we if we keep you keep no, it. No, I meant private. before that. You said something about council. Mm. I thought. Mm -hmm. Or were you talking about special meeting with Bethel? Probably we're saying we have one tentatively scheduled for the 24th. So don't schedule your budget work session for the 24th. Right. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and I can see that one being canceled, but I, it's not officially canceled yet. So the next one on the 27th? Dude, what day is that? 
Thursday. Thursday. Uh, yeah, Parks and Rec is in the morning, so we could do in the uh, in the that's evening. That's already set up too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll do the 27th. What time do you guys want to do one at early in the afternoon? Do you want to do them on the evening? Because I know last year I think we did some around 3 o'clock, 3.30. Mm -hmm. um, we can accommodate work schedules clearly if you need to be off. We close at 5, so the earliest I can probably get here is about 5.30. Okay. That's what I tell you. <laughs> we, we do, the, the but we, we try to strive for good customer service. At 6 or 6.30. 27, just Right. Grass isn't growing, snow isn't falling. So six, okay? Yeah, we're good with whatever. Whatever council needs, we are there for you. Six on the 27th. Six on the 27th. Do you just want to do the next, the second one a, a week later so it's easy to remember? What, Which what, would be? Third. The third, November 3rd. That's fine with me. Like I said, well, we, we can probably get through it all, but I don't want to rush any council if they have any questions with that. Like, we at least have a second one. Third uh, so, and you can put the legal add in for both. Third of that. discuss the As a follow up. Operate 2020. If, if needed. Is it overflow? Yeah. Six o'clock to To vote, to discuss, and take action. All right. No, no, not take an action, to the vote. Yeah, to say to discuss. Discuss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, are we still talking about the spatial meeting? They might take a motion. No, the work, session. work session on what date now? Discuss. First one will be on the 27th, 27th and then back up on the 3rd and 6th. So both at 6 p.m.? If that's okay with council. You go Any issues with that, Mr. Lindsay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which date? The 27th. Cool? Yeah. I have another meeting at 6. <laughs> and these will be at the uh, fire station now here. Would the 20, well, what? either the 26th or the 28th work for anybody, or? Not the 28th. 28th, uh, 26th Friday. Work for me. Would the 26th work for everybody instead of the 27th? Uh, the 26th, it'll have to work, okay, if that's council availability. Does anyone have on the 25th? I can do the 25th. Too. I can do the 25th, too. Yeah. 25th? Yeah. Okay, and that, Mr. Cook, you good with that? And that's for the, uh, <laughs> we've been on so many meetings. I'm <laughs> operating budget, discuss the uh, budget, okay. 1025 <laughs> at 6 p.m. and then 11 November 3 3rd. at 6 p.m. This is that firehouse. At the firehouse. Mm -hmm. Fire. okay. The last thing I have is a big thank you to those who uh, helped, took part in any association with the Heritage of Flight. That is a great, um, non-city sponsored event that just brings a boatload of people to New Carlisle. Um, and it's a lot of um, it's a lot of good publicity. So for those of you who work hard to put that on, we definitely appreciate that. You know, I didn't see Mike there at all this week. And I no, know what no, he was doing. no. I heard Sorry. he went to Florida. Since you brought it up on our Heritage Flight, or something I wanted to bring up since it's on the agenda since you brought it up. Um, so yes, thank you. Our mm -hmm. committee works hard. A big thanks to all the local uh, businesses because they're the ones that pretty much paid for that festival and for the stage and all the equipment and the deputies, you know, the deputies, that's probably the biggest expense to make sure there's deputies there to make it a safe event. So um, I'm going to embarrass somebody in the audience today. <laughs> so at the, at, the, at the festival we had, we had them on Saturday and Sunday, uh, which was a, a group that comes all the way from Indiana called Silly Safari, and they bring all these snakes and skull and he's really just wild animals is really cool. <coughs> we had him do it twice so he brings out the, the, the gentleman's name was uh the stage name uh ryan the lion real nice guy and he brings out this uh if i'm saying this right for me he's python yeah and he has all these kids come up and, and hold it and someone i was shocked in the audience that got up that wanted to see this snake and i told her that i was gonna show this to council and i give it uh -oh. to her so I hope I don't, you don't mind me embarrassing you, but this is our very own Janelle Zimmerman in the middle of the stage. Look at Janelle. that. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I had Scott at Google Graphics add uh, you know, a little text to it, and it's frameable. It's a perfect size, and it just says, Silly Safaris, Ryan the Lion on the right, uh, presents Eli's uh, Burmese Python, uh, Janelle Zimmerman Center joining in on the fun. So I wanted to give that to you. <laughs> Because so, that was fun to see you get up on stage and do yeah. that. So. That's awesome.
or if you want to come back. That must have been after I talked to you. <laughs> Thank you. So, and don't let the dust not only for kids, it's for the adults. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So, all right, moving on. So, thank you very much for the report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And moving on to uh, community reports in the night, comments from members of the public. If anyone has any questions, comments, feedback, love, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and try to keep it to five minutes. I used to have to come in from the front. <laughs> um, Julie Reese, 6184 Dayton Brant Road, Miami County, Ethel Township Trustee. So for the past months, I've been up here raising concerns. And so I thought that it would be nice to come and say thank you to the council for voting no on the Miami County annexation. Thanks to those that came out, both from New Carlisle and from the township, to, to give their concerns. and. Some of those behind the scenes that were giving tours of the property and working on alternatives. So a couple times I suggested that um, you know we be good neighbors and vote no. So I want to say thank you for being good neighbors and my emotional ties to New Carlisle continue. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks for coming and thanks for the for the positive feedback. It's nice to hear sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? All right. No. no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. You know. You're not afraid to get up on stage or in front of anybody. Yeah, but a python might be a lot nicer to talk to than council. Oh, oh, Janelle's dropping the. Well, I, I just love Give me a picture back. I love snakes, so that's a good thing. No, I, I just wanted to thank uh, everybody for the festival because it, it was just so wonderful. And I know. Everybody puts in so much hard work, and, and that's really appreciated. It and to thank the council for their vote too, and and for being really good neighbors. I think it's great. Thank you. And thank you, Mike, for the picture. You're welcome. All right, anyone else? All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Comments from uh, resolutions, Ms. Burner, if you would please. Mm -hmm. well, maybe. Thought I lost them, sorry. Resolution 2022-15R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the American Rescue Fund to the Wastewater Fund of the City of New Carlisle. So moved. Second. Uh, so explanation of this resolution. This resolution is needed due to the transferring of public money between the American Rescue Plan Fund and the Wastewater uh, Fund. This is to assist in paying for uh, the repair and maintenance of clarifiers number one and number two. Council, any questions or discussion? When you're ready. Uh, question. Question. Uh, Miss, Mr. Kirko, I thought we replaced the clarifiers. This Didn't is we the get a grant? We have one sitting there to get replaced, but we did. This is the official transfer of the funds. Okay, right. but I thought we got a grant or something for that. Part of it, yes. Okay. Another on the thing. Okay, thank you. Just checking. You ready, Ms. Burr? Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman <coughs> Lindsay. Yes. Passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 45. This was introduced on September 19th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 850 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding peddlers. So, second. <laughs> and an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance uh, was a city council initiative uh, that further restricts what, what peddlers can and cannot do within the city limits. Any questions, council? When you're ready, ma'am. <coughs> Councilman Lindsay? No. It would be Councilman him. Roadwald. It would be him. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. 
Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes seven zero. Ordinance 2022-46 introduced on September 19th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending chapter 648 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle for the purpose of addressing panhandling. So moved. Okay. And explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance is also a city council initiative. If passed, this legislative measure will add pan will add a panhandling section to city codes already established under the peace and disturbances. Council, any questions, comments? I think it's an awesome thing that we can keep the panhandlers under control. Maybe. Anyone else? You're ready, Ms. Brenner. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwell. Wake up, Dan. No. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 6-1. Ordinance 2022-47 introduced on September 19th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending section 220.01 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to increase the city manager's dollar amount threshold for entering into contracts. Anyone? So moved. Second. I'll second by Mr. Long. An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this increases the uh, my man monetary threshold to enter into contracts um, from 20 to, I think we put 35 on that one. $35. 1000 oh. <laughs> Council, any feedback? All right, you're ready for this. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That passes 7 0. Okay. Ordinance 2022 48 introduced on September 19th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 220 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle for the purpose of adding a section for an assistant city manager. So moved. Second. <clears throat> An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance, if passed, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this ordinance is required because if passed, will amend city code to allow for the creation of an assistant city manager. Council, any questions, comments? I just had a comment on this. We talked about it at the last meeting, I think, just a little, or whatever it was, we discussed it. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm not for this. I just, I don't think it's the right time. I'm not saying that there's not a need for an assistant city manager at some point. We went for a long time, as far as I know, ever, if ever, a city assistant city manager. I know that Mr. Kitko and various people over the years, I think, have filled in uh, for that position. Uh, I just don't think it's the right time. The city, per se, hasn't grown as far as we haven't expanded, you know, lots of roads and, and you know, a lot of new positions added. I'm not saying that there is a time where Mr. Bridge doesn't need help or assistance. I would like to see maybe a, and we've, we've asked this in the past, and I'd love to see you get one because you so deserve one, a, a secretary or something of that nature. I think that would help with your, your workload. Um, but um, we've had a lot of administration expansions or increase in pays over the year. I just, I would like to wait on this one. So that's all I have to say. Did you have something? I concur. Okay. Anyone else? All right. When you're ready, All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. All right, that passes five to two. And moving on to ordinance 2022-49, introduced on September 19th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance naming Howard Kitko as the director of public service slash assistant city manager. So moved. Second. Is that Rodewald? 
I think so. Was it you said? Yes. Yes. Uh, the next mention of this ordinance. This ordinance, if passed, names Howard Kiko <coughs> as director of public service slash assistant city manager and sets his yearly salary at 80000 Answer any questions, comments, feedback? In addition to what I just last said, first off, Mr. Kiko, I know you're normally not here for these meetings. I want to I want to stress to you that any of my, my comments about this are not geared towards you personally because, for example, if Mr. Bridge was to get a job for a million dollars per year and leave us tomorrow, I would have no problem making you the new city manager. I think you do a great job. And, uh, you, you know the city well. You've been here for a long time. Uh, again, once we jump down to this, uh, to this particular ordinance, it, it mentions the pay increase uh, for this new position. Uh, you know, we've handed out a handful of administration side uh, raises this year. Um, I'm not saying that they're not deserving, but I think that we've handed out a few too many this year. Not again, not that they are not deserving. It's just it's a few too many for me for this year. So that's just where I stand. On. Again, it's, it's no disrespect to Mr. Kick or his ability to do the job at all. I think the role of the guy is just, in general, the position itself. Anyone else? Mr. Anybody in there? Good. I concur along with that. Mr. Lindsay. My understanding of this uh, title of Director of Service, Public Service and Assistant City Manager is there's a lot of things that uh, Mr. Kiko does that that our city manager does not know about or does not understand. And it, it, it's time consuming to put projects on, on uh, hold, even if it's a day or two, to buy equipment or do what needs to be done. Uh, I don't believe the city manager is is uh, qualified in a lot that Mr. Kiko does. No offense against him or Mr. Kiko. I'm sure the things that the city manager does that Mr. Kiko does not know. Uh, it also is not a permanent uh, position. It can be taken away with an ordinance at any point in the future if a future council or even this council would decide that that uh, we're not getting our money's worth or whatever we can always eliminate this with an ordinance so i for one i'm in favor of this uh, sort of a promotion probably not a promotion but uh, more of a headache than anything else for mr kicko but it will take pressure off of uh, Mr. Bridge also, because in conversations, he, he freely admits, there's a lot of things you, you don't understand about what he does when it comes to sewer, or, or you know, the, the wastewater and stuff, the various pumps and whatnot. Am I, am I correct in that, count, that statement? Oh, very much so. Okay. So I, I think it would be an advantage to have Mr. Kitko in that? Would I vote for anybody else? Uh, probably not. He has, I don't know, what, 30 years plus experience in this, in, in your, your uh, position that you currently hold? I'm in year 24, and then I have prior military with doing this stuff. Okay, so I mean, I don't think we'll get anybody to do, to replace him at any given time with his, with his knowledge. And I don't think he's looking to go anywhere. I think he's happy here. So that's just my two cents uh, for this. Personally, uh, I know we're not supposed to put our personal feelings on things, but I think council should be 100 unanimous behind, but behind this, uh, this uh, 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 promotion or whatever, or headache from Mr. Mm -hmm. Kitko. That's all I've got. Mr. Mayor, can I say something? Of course. A lot of this too has to do with streamlining of, of, of work um, contracts. You know, how we would have to supply me with a contract, I read it, not making sense of it, send it out to Jake, and how he can't sign off his own stuff. Like, I don't need to be involved in that process. How we can have that open door communication with our law director, I'll make him copy me on it so I know what's going on with Jake and we're not doubling up. But for the most part, it's, it's, a, it's a company thing of a lot of things. But it will definitely streamline some services, especially with contracts. 
And just for the record, so again, so everyone's clear, this this isn't an eighty thousand dollar paid raise. No. Getting you to eighty thousand, which is still vastly underpaid in my my opinion. I've gone on record about that. Getting Howie to 80, it's a modest increase from where he currently is. So, um, yeah. I'd say vote to the vote. Anyone else? I did have a question once Mr. Lindsay spoke. So if, if this passes, which I mean, I'm going to assume it is, so we'll have two technically city managers, you know, obviously one's a backup, not the city manager. So if Mr. Bridge, you were to go on vacation, you're gone for a week. So you will have a phone that we could call at night that, you know, hey, there's this, an issue that, you know, whatever. You know, just typically how we are with you, but it's just going to be passed over. I mean, here's a deal. I mean, if I go away for a week, how he, he'll be there. It's not like he, I already had a discussion with him. He's not going to change policy. He's not going to take any of that. It's just a point of contact. If I have another, God forbid, another heart attack and I'm out for a month, month and a half, that's when he's really going to kick in and have to make those calls and changes. But for a week vacation, yeah, you can, I would believe you, please call him, don't call me. Let me <laughs> enjoy my vacation for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it, it, it is a security blanket, should that. Should I, something happen to me in an extended period of time, he has all my computer passwords, he can get in my office, he knows where everything is, for the most part, built to search for some stuff and files, but he has access to everything that I have access to. Even before this vote was come on, I set him up to set access. He's the only one that has his thumb ID on my iMac to get into should I not be able to do my job. So we've already done checks and balances in place like that. But he'd be able to sign off on stuff. That is the kicker. That's the big thing. If I'm not here, he can sign on my behalf, and that's what this will allow it to do. And his pay will come just like it, it comes from various departments because he does oversee various Yeah, we pulled we, this year in anticipation of this because we had this discussion last year and we are told to wait to this year. So that's why we're here with it now. We did beef up the city manager wages, so he is paid a little bit out of my wage fund as well. Okay. But yes, he is able to be split amongst a lot. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Are you ready, Ms. Burner? All right. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay? Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That passes five to two. And the last one is a read only. So ordinance 2022-50 introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 10-17-22. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purchase of a new 2022 or 2023 fire engine. Um, other business, the BZA case on 10-17-22 meeting, Windreach Veterinary Services at 201 North Church Street. Um, city offices will be closed on Monday, October 10th, 2022, which is Columbus Day. And any other additional city <clears throat> business is open for discussion. Mr. Mayor, sure. uh, at our last uh, special meeting, which I believe was what, last Thursday, we neg neglected to excuse Mr. Grimm. So I make a motion that we excuse Mr. Grimm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Uh, I probably don't. Abstain. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. All right. Pass six zero. Any other discussion? Mr. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Roadwald. Second. 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 Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. And Councilman Redwood? Yes. Seven zero. We're adjourned. See everyone next meeting.